In this lesson, we're going to look at measures of center. Another word for center is average or middle. We have some definitions to start out. Some of them we've seen before, but it's always a good refresher. A statistic is a measurement describing some characteristic of a sample. A parameter is a measurement describing a characteristic of a population. And we can remember this with alliteration, the repetition of consonant sounds. Statistic is for a sample and a parameter is for a population. In general, because populations are difficult, to obtain all the data from, we usually can easily find a statistic, but a parameter is much more elusive. If our population is small though, we can talk about population parameters and be able to calculate them. When we move into inferential statistics, starting with chapter seven, we will be talking about how to take a statistic and estimate a population parameter. And that's really the essence behind inferential statistics, is to take a sample, get that measurement, that statistic, and use that statistic to estimate the population parameter. The general rounding rule, this goes for anything really in mathematics. We do not round any numbers until the very end and the calculations are complete. And the reason that we don't round until the very end is because if we round in the middle, the difference between the true answer and the rounded answer actually grows when we start applying other operations after the rounding. So don't round the numbers. Use all of the digits of the numbers until the very end. And then when the calculation is done, then we look at the rounding and we round the numbers appropriately. Now for our first measure of center, the mean. The mean is a measure of center that is found by adding all of the values in our data and then dividing by the total number of values. And we can talk about the mean as a sample or as a population. So a statistic, since it's a sample mean, we have a statistic here, and a population, we have a parameter. For this sample mean, we have a a particular symbol that is used to represent the sample mean. In general, the data is given by the variable x. Usually our data is x1, x2, so forth to some number xn. So we have these x's with little subscripts indicating that they could be different. The sample mean the symbol used is a capital X with a bar on top. This symbol is meant to represent the sample mean. And it has a formula. The sample mean is add up all of the data. So x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn and divide by the total number of data values that we have. So n is the number of data values in the sample. There's another formula that's slightly different, but mathematically it means the same thing. And it uses that Greek symbol sigma that we've seen before. So alternatively, x bar is the sum of the x's divided by n. So there's that sigma again, capital sigma, that means sum in mathematics. We read this sample mean symbol as x bar. So if we see the x with the bar on top, we just call it x bar. It is a statistic because it is the sample mean. The population mean has pretty much exactly the same formula, except now we're adding up all of the data values in the population. So let me clarify this data up here. This is sample data. For population data, we may go to some capital N 
I will talk about that symbol for the population mean in just a second. So we'll have x1, x2, we may have x little n, and then we're going to go to x capital N. We're adding up all of the values in our population. So here n is the number of data values in the population. This symbol for the population mean is another Greek letter, and that Greek letter is the letter mu. It's pronounced mu, almost like a kitty cat, mu. It looks like a U with an extra tail at the front. So I usually start low, go up, and curve back around. That's how I make my mu's. I've seen some students make the U and then put a tail in the front. However you want to make that mu is completely fine. One thing that you're going to see in this chapter is that the Greek letters are going to be used for parameters and our standard Latin alphabet will be used for statistics. Why do they use the letter mu? I don't know. Maybe to represent mean, so the M for mean, possibly. We can also write the formula more concisely, much like our sample mean, where mu equals the sum of X over capital N. So in a very similar way as our sample mean. And our rounding rule for mean, we're going to round one more decimal place than the data. which will be pretty much our standard rounding rule for most of the statistics that we'll encounter. Let's do one example together by hand to find the mean. So we have the data here, a lot of whole numbers, 57310084. So to find the mean, I'm going to assume this is a sample since it is a small a small grouping of numbers. Um, it ultimately doesn't matter because my formulas are the same. Whether it's a population or a, a sample will be more important later on. But we'll start out adding them and divide by how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And if I add these together, I'm not going to pull up a calculator right now. I'm just going to use adding. And I'm also going to really make use of the the commutative and associative properties, which just means that I can rearrange these and add them up in any order that I want to because I'm only adding. So 7 plus 3 will give me 10. I see that 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 4 will give me another 10. And then adding 0, 0, 0, and 8 is 8. So I have two 10s and an 8, 28, divided by 8. And now I do need a calculator. I don't want to do long division. So you absolutely could just add these up on your calculator. I just want to show you that you can do some of this in your head and by allowing yourself to do these small calculations on your own without a calculator. When you do go to the calculator, it may help you recognize if you've made a mistake when you enter them in, almost as a good way to estimate before you put it in. So. Be mindful of that when you're doing these things by hand. Yes, you can use a calculator for sure and add them up or add them in your head if they're small. We are going to be looking at using Google and Excel to do these means also. So 28 divided by 8 will give me 3.5. What's important about this number is that I have whole number data and I have one more decimal place for my mean. So I actually want to keep that number as it is, 3.5. You try the next example on your own. Find the mean by hand. And by hand does mean you are allowed to use the calculator. Uh, pause the video, try it on your own. And then when you come back, I'll have the answer. So now adding these up, dividing by 5, I get a mean of 4.8. Next up is our measure center called the median. 